Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about lying on your resume. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you figure out if the candidate lied about their experiences on their resume? I talk to them. Uh, usually I don't check the resume before I talk to a candidate because I don't need to. Uh, yeah, I, the, only, the exception to that rule is uh, if I'm a bit unsure after my conversation with them, if it seems feasible or not. I haven't so far been unsure more than once or twice, I think, so far. Because a conversation, I, with a conversation I usually figure out it fairly quickly if uh, like how well they know the things that they're talking about and usually it's only the managers like the engineering managers and these sorts of types where it gets a little bit tricky sometimes to figure out what they actually know because the the issue with some companies is that uh, they prioritize social skills over engineering talent and i argue that i know that it is difficult but if, if you are looking for a manager is the regular manager then there's no point in trying to get someone who sort of knows some coding then it's better for you to hire someone who does not, doesn't know anything but is a very social like you go full on the social part but the ideal case is that you have prior software developers who really actually understand modern day, day development processes and have decided to move into a more social role or like a more management type of role but when it comes to regular software developers it's easy usually uh, because like I argue that a the the basis basics of an effective hiring process for software developers is that you first and foremost present a code test of some sort that gives the candidate enough uh, like they they do enough development so that you get a good sample going so you can sort of figure out what they know and what they don't know and then when you have done that you do a personal interview with someone who is a professional grade software developer and I am uh, I fall into that bucket which means that when I talk to another programmer I, I can hear if they know what they're talking about it's usually not it might be more difficult if you're a junior type of candidate but uh, or if you're a junior software developer when you have worked for a little while it's very easy to hear how a person reasons about question the questions that you post them and then you of course you prepare questions which are open ended you can you shouldn't ask like what is 1 plus 1 or like something uh, arbitrary like that you should ask them about their experiences within the field so for a front end developer for example you might ask them things like have you tried which SBA frameworks or have you been working with and which one do you like best why that one uh, do you what type of css uh, strategies do you use like which are you a CSS and JS person? Uh, do you use post CSS or CSS modules? S CSS, like how do you think about the different approaches? What are pros and cons, etc.? These sort of experience things for the back end developers is the same thing. Composition over inheritance, how do you feel about that rule? The MVC pattern, how do you usually make sure that you separate your different layers in? Uh, uh, how do you which sort of which backend language do you prefer and why that one do you prefer to well like how do you do caching how do you do testing like your testing pyramid strategy how do you usually distribute your test when is an integration test a better a better choice than a unit test and if you have to like uh, what type of mocking strategy do you use like when do you mock or do you run things against the live database when you do integration tests etc etc these sorts of questions there is no way a person who doesn't actually know what they're talking about or someone who lies on their CV about how experienced they are is going to be able to to fool someone who is experienced. The closest thing to a lie that they can get away with is when they follow my tried and true tip which is lie 20 percent. Lying 20 percent is usually where I see what I what mean by that is basically if you want to be a DevOps person and you're a software developer and you sort of know how things work, you can say that you have some experience with ops. And now the question is, is the person who's interviewing you actually, do they know what it means to be a DevOps person? Can they ask you concrete questions about how to do that job? And if they can, 
they're gonna figure out just quote unquote how experienced you are within this area which is sort of what I was to referring to when it comes to managers it's the same sort of deal where usually managers are more fluffy and high level and uh, the thing that they all do which is I think uh, is sort of interesting and that's why I uh, my secret weapon is to do a very similar sort of thing I do with the software developers because when you ask a manager something fluffy like what are your experience with leading a team because you think that that is the thing that matters when it comes to management it is not what matters is that you have a sociable person who understands how to, who has emotional intelligence and the knowledge and experience of how to run an IT company or how an IT company is uh, how you how you actually effectively do things in IT people who only ask leaders or like the managers about like leadership skills are in my opinion ignorant because the leadership the daily job of a manager is not a philosophical job it is damage control it is helping people out with different questions and the HR matters. It is coaching. It is sitting in meetings and planning future work. It's a lot of planning, a lot of high level administrative stuff. And no one will be able to do that better than someone who really, really knows what it means to effectively deliver on things. Inefficiency at the management level is the number one killer of companies. And so when I talk to a manager, my first thing is that I try to figure out like how the like, how sociable is this person? Is this an individual who is going to make people feel comfortable? Is it an individual who can relate to the role of the software developers? And then I start asking questions related to how do you set up a delivery pipeline? What type of coaching strategies do you usually have for your software developers so they keep on learning? How do you keep your software developers motivated uh, to do a good job? How do you try to help empowering your team? What type of uh, uh, qualities, uh, quality checks do you expect from your developers? How do you structure inter-team communication and make sure that you can align different teams? These are questions that are very specific, especially the, my favorite one is the delivery pipeline. Because if you can't, as an engineering manager or software leadership or architect or whatever, explain to me how to get code from a laptop out into production in a safe and sustainable way, then you don't know how to run a software company. It's that simple, because that is the foundation of it all. It is sort of like a car manufacturing, like a manager of a car from a car company not knowing how the assembly line, like the sort of the steps that are involved. You can manage all you want, but you fundamentally don't understand the thing that actually is being produced in your factory, or in this case your software teams. And then it becomes very difficult for you to manage those sorts of people. So what I want you to take away from this is that the way that I figure out if someone lies on their CV is or their resume is very simple. I ask, the, I, first and foremost, there's a code test or something like that, and then you ask them questions related to their experiences. And if you know yourself what a good answer sounds like, and you actually know the stuff yourself, it's very simple. If you're a higher level manager, like an HR person, you can basically forget about it. Then all you have to go on is the same thing I have to go on when I talk to a doctor or a lawyer or a therapist or something like that. It's just the personal charisma and believe, like how believable is, does this person sound. And in some cases that's going to work. And in a lot of cases it's not going to work because it's difficult for you to figure out. But when you have experienced software developers as part of your recruitment process and to, they're doing the interviews and so forth, uh, it's usually very simple. Just make sure that they have questions that are very open-ended so that the candidate speaks about their experiences, ideally about very concrete things. Because if you keep things too high level, the charismatic candidates are going to fluff you away. They're going to just spend time trying to, like they're, they're going to never touch anything concrete because uh, high level discussions is what a person who doesn't actually know anything does when they're trying to hide that they don't know anything, which is incidentally what politicians and middle managers, etc. Like that's what they all do. When you want to hide that you're incompetent or you don't actually know the topic all that well, you keep it high level and conceptual. That's practically everybody. And so when you're talking to managers, for example, engineering managers, a very good thing is to check how well do they actually know how code 
gets out into production and the sort of things that the software developers have to do in order to maintain their system and like all this sort of stuff do they actually know sort of like an assembly line do they actually know how they make a car or how an uh, a toaster actually gets assembled. If they don't know that stuff, that should be an indicator that this is a person who might not actually be all that good with IT. Have a great day.